Here we have the 2020 BMW S1000 RR. And as we've said on the show before, we rather like it. I never quite got on with the previous gen, but the new one just does everything so much better. This is the third time BMW has built a superbike. The third major update of the S1000 RR. And it's like the first two were good, but they had that little niggly, niggly little things that were wrong with it. With this one, it's kind of like they found the balance. So every single time they tried sort of something different and worked at it methodically the way Germans do. And now it's the most perfect bike to sit on. It's the most comfortable of all the super bikes. It looks fantastic. It makes great power. And I don't mean great power just as in the fastest. It makes power throughout, lots of power throughout the rev range. I mean, it's very easy to ride. The electronics are fantastic. Everything is brilliant. So you could say, third time lucky. On the case of the Germans, third time logical. The previous bike just felt like it was that headmaster at school just cons consistently giving you jacks and smacking you, telling you you're doing things wrong, not letting you be yourself. The new bike just, you know, educates you in a better way. It just lets you get on with the job let you enjoy the bike. Yeah, this bike is good, but we think it can be even better. Here we have another 2020 BMW S1000 RR. You may have noticed that this is the motorsport version, and that already is an improvement. However, outwardly, there seems to be nothing else special about this bike. That is, until you lift the metaphorical hood. Oh. Holy moly, that's fast! <laughs> By the beard of Zeus! Woohoo! But what could it be that differentiates these two machines? You would think that the performance one has had some serious work done to it, with many hours put into expensive engine components and drastic modifications. Well, you'd be wrong. In fact, the motor has never even been opened. To investigate the sorcery further, we've come to Performance Technique, the tuning department of fired up motorcycles. Here we meet the head of tuning, Dean Michau. He starts by fitting an Akrapovich exhaust system that not only adds power, but is nearly half the weight of the hemorrhoid infested standard exhaust. The next step is to add a sprint performance filter. It allows three times the breathability of the standard cotton unit with no change in filtration. They achieve this frankly miraculous act through a special synthetically manufactured polyester that is somehow able to do it. Then the real magic happens. Dean plugs in a special rapid bike tuning module that cracks into the electronic brain system of the ECU and downloads the maps onto his PC. This is where it gets tricky because Euro 5 has thrown so many restrictions at motor designers that they have had to create all sorts of complex new systems in order to comply. The ECU in this motorcycle has more than 100 maps, each controlling a different aspect of the motorcycle, and Dean spends hundreds of hours methodically working through each, discovering its purpose and figuring out how to improve it. Until we get to this, back at Red Star Raceway, with these two morons riding it, Damn, damn, damn. The way this thing makes power, it's not so much... Well, it is horsepower, you know, it definitely has more, but it's as you open it, so this, this little bit here, you just hear the revs just pick up so much quicker, so much faster, where the other one's kind of more lagged. So you go into a corner, go at about 2% throttle, and then as you get to the exit, open. And there it is, it just kicks all in. The BMW S1000 RR has always been 
kind of at the top of the tree when it comes to acceleration, hard acceleration and overall speed. It kicks you in the face. It kicks you in the butt and tells you to go fast. And the new one is smoother and better than ever before. So how can it get better? Do you want it to get better? Do you want more than that? Well, performance techniques have given this one more. And just like the difference between skim milk, low fat milk and full cream milk. Okay. They're all smooth. They all taste just great. They're all milk. But the one just has more taste. The one just has more fat. And that's what this performance technique BMW S1000R has. It just has more taste. It's tastier. It's fatter. It's meaner. Turn in. Knee on the ground. Open first. Oh, that poor traction control is battling there. The wheelie control is like, oh, oh, oh. <laughs> it's, it is ridiculously smooth. It doesn't, you can't really feel a hell of a lot of the 20 horsepower difference. You can't, it doesn't jerk out of your hands, but it's so smooth and it's just, it's just so much more. It's the best full cream milk you're ever going to drink. You kind of understand why. Clint Slater, Blaze Baker, the two SA champs use this. I can see why. As usual, I am completely and utterly jealous and fed up because Don's doing all the fun stuff. Uh, Red Star Raceway, a couple of fast BMWs, what more could you possibly want? And now I get to catch up with him and ask the questions I want answered. You're at Fired Up Motorcycles, Don, so the sounds of a motorcycle shop in the background, but let's ignore them and let me cut straight to the chase. The hardware involved, Acropovic exhaust, we've got a sprint filter and obviously the rapid bike module itself. Let's start with the Acropovic because that's bound to be the most expensive. Oh yes. Um, it was 29 grand when they fitted it. Now because a whole lot of COVID has happened, a whole lot of chaos, it's now up to 36 grand. Really that's not, that's quite cheap. I've seen full systems going for 80,000 rand before. So 36 isn't bad. And you look at it, I mean, beautiful titanium. It looks so good. All the modern materials you can ask for. And especially compared to the standard exhaust, which is just quite frankly, full of giant hemorrhoids or something like that. It's <laughs> really, it's not a pretty thing. It's also half the weight. The, the, the Akropovich is half the weight of the standard one with much better sound, much better power, everything better in every way. So worth it. And the sprint filter, a simple uh, item that you could probably fit yourself, but it's not just uh, the effect it has on the horsepower. In terms of longevity, it, usefully, you can sort of keep it forever, really, can't you? It, yeah, the, the standard filter is made out of cop cotton. This is some polyester material. The most interesting thing that makes people cringe is when you see even on their website, they tell you how to clean it. And what's so interesting about that is, is that normally you don't use compressed air at all. You don't, you know, it's a definite no-no. The cotton filters, it'll rip them to pieces. Whereas they actually show you on the sprint filter website, they will actually be sitting there with compressed air going Shh, And a lot of mechanics go, no, but they're saying, nope, on our filters, it's perfectly fine. Best way to clean it. The rapid bike module is what allows you to fiddle with the bike's brain. And that's where all the clever stuff goes mm. on. Uh, big money or reasonable? Well, you're looking at about 8,000 Rand for the sprint for the rapid bike system. Uh, it's, but I mean, this is really what sort of ties it up. Uh, rapid bike is the official partner of uh, Kropovich. Even on the Kropovich website under that exhaust, they tell you this is what works best with a flashed ECU. And they mostly recommend rapid bike, especially when you consider, I mean, the way those the way the system works is on exhaust gases and the heat of the exhaust gases. And you look at those giant hemorrhoid goiter things. I mean, the amount of heat that they have compared to the, the Akropovich, it's going to make a difference. In fact, very often they put Akropovich systems on. The bike actually makes less horsepower until you kind of um, tie it all together using the rapid bike system. That is where the real horsepower happens. And the real clever stuff is... Uh... Look, I mean, we're used to, for years and years and years, you and I have been used to things like Dynajet uh, sort of add-ons that piggyback yep. onto the existing system. That's no longer possible anymore, really, is it? So we have this rapid bike system and its brain basically allows it to deal with the Euro 5 emissions, yeah. which are, are, for want of a better word, horrible. Yeah, they, they're so strict now on the way they do it. The systems they have to use to comply are so complex 
And I mean, the bikes all have to run. I mean, you won't believe how lean these motors have to run just to meet the, the, the compliancy. So they really are. It's like, it's like Usain Bolt running with a plastic bag over his head. It's so restrictive. Um, so not only do you need very clever systems to actually uh, crack into these things and tune it, but the amount of gains you can make from tuning it is so much more than before. Uh, and talking of gains, yeah, I mean, uh, what was it? I think the figure is about 20 horsepower or so for these superbikes. But perhaps more important than that, it's, it's not the actual big numbers. As you found out on the track, it's all about feel and down in that more useful part of the rev range, which works on a track, but also will work hugely on a road. No, it's, 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 it's not so much top end. I mean, this, the difference in kind of the higher revs, that 20 horsepower, as you say, and the higher revs that you feel between the two motorcycles, it's not really felt that much when you actually ride it. The big difference is that moment you open the throttle. So not in 100% throttle. You come out of those tight bends, especially Red Star Raceway, you crack open the throttle. And there's a huge difference in feel between the standard bike and the, the modified one. I mean, we always thought the standard bike one was like, ooh, how do you control this thing? You then get on this rapid bike one, the tuned one. And it's amazing how it just kind of, you just sort of lift the bike up, get the throttle a bit open, and it just sort of launches out of the corner, but not in like an uncontrollable way, in a very smooth kind of, um, you know, how should I say controllable? I'm using controllable too much. <laughs> but this is, what, this is what fast motorbikes do to you. They make you lose your mind. <laughs> Nicely put, Don, and there's no better way to lose your mind than a powerful superbike around Red Star Raceway. Join us after the break when we'll move on from this, which is the height and the pinnacle of uh, motorcycle technology at the moment, and I'm going to take you back to where it all began, just over 120 years ago.